Hey guys, how are you? I am fine. You know what? This is starting to sound a lot like one of those letters that you used to have to write when you were a kid because one of your aunts sent you a dollar for your birthday. I am fine. How are you? Weather's good. I have to go do my homework. And you know all that. So I'll work on some uh, unique content. So what are we up to? Well, we're back on this silver tone student instrument that we started off talking about how to clean it up for $3.74. And then we talked about the teeter-totter neck where it looked like the neck was breaking loose here, but actually the back was loose. Now, I'm going to give you links to a playlist that I'm building about this guitar right up there right about now. There will also be a link at the end of the video. So you just click on that and you'll be able to see this guitar progress along the way. What we're going to do this time is we talked a lot about teeter-totters and yin and yang and all that kind of thing and where there is compression, there's tension and all that kind of thing and now we're going to deal with the effects of what happens when we let a guitar dry out in an attic, in a case, wherever it is to the point where things start breaking loose and then when we start correcting them we fix something here Something breaks right here. Twist here causes cracking here. So we're going to work on fixing some cracks. I've given you some uh, episodes in the past about 10 string crack hack or accessing and fixing cracks that are unaccessible, that kind of thing. So feel free to have a look up there. But we're going to focus in on how to fix everything that's wrong with this, including a theory that I learned from Fred Wallachy about building up instead of tearing down, building up instead of tearing down, and how that can affect how a finish on a guitar looks. We're going to take a look at that sa sage advice too. So that said, let's get to the bench. Okay, here we are at the bench, and you can see right here, there is a crack right there, and there's one offset to it about five or six millimeters or a half an inch or one eighteenth hundredth sixty-fifth of a cubit, whatever you are measuring in today. But these cracks need to be fixed. They need to be first closed and then splints put on them so they don't open up and run and we'll get to that in a minute we've done episodes about this before but this is a crack this is not some monstrosity that requires a frankenstein repair where it's actually missing something like look at that hey i want to give a shout out to my friends the bonnevilles in belfast haven't forgotten about you I think this one might have your name on it. Just be patient. But anyway, yeah, nothing like that. And also, in the same category, cracks and splits turn into holes like, remember the Archcraft where it fell off and had a big gaping hole in the back? And yeah, you remember this one. Do you need a link to the playlist about all the things that we did with the Archcraft. It's right up there right about now. But there's body work to, here, to do here. And you know that we already fixed this spot up here where it was teeter-tottering back and forth. Um, link up there. You want to catch up with this? And we're going to put this all in a playlist so you can see what's going on. Now let's move the camera down and look at this stuff I have here. I have a hot plate. They still have these. If you're in a one-room house, you know what these are. Anyway, heat control and look at this iron. Isn't that hot? Uh, not too much. Anyway, watch this. I put the iron on the hot plate and because they put these together with hide glue, which you're going to see some of that in a little bit, but if we heat these up, 
like so and use these to carefully go in here. We will cut the hide glue loose over to here, like so. Then we will be able to squeeze this together using any number of means. Now, I want to show you something. There is what's called kerfing in here. It's glued to the side, and what it's meant to do is glue the top and sides together. Now, it's only about this wide. So let's say I heat this puppy up all the way and go all the way in there. If there's a brace running across here, I may get under that brace, work it loose. You don't know what's going to happen. So while we're heating this up, I want to tell you a little bit. Look at this. This is a pallet knife. It used to be this long. I took a piece of tape, marked it off, took a disc grinder, cut it off and rounded it off. And what do you know? It is about the depth of the kerfing. So when I heat this up with my iron, my grandma's not looking for the iron. Whatever she tells you, it's not true. Anyway, when I get this heated up, I can slip this in here and I don't have to worry about getting whatever is way in here cut loose when I'm using something like this. So we're going to get this heated up and I'm going to open up the back here to where I can have access all the way back to here. I want to kind of tell you about the iron and some of this scrap apparatus that I have going on here. Okay, just because I use it and I'm still alive doesn't make it a good idea. So you're on your own and if I scare you there will be less competition Titian to do the kind of work that I pretend to do. So the one thing I do want to show you that I've shown you before, not this cool towel, but this cool tape dispenser. It has binding tape. It has different low tack adhesive. So the first thing I want to do is show you that I have opened the guitar up. I have taken and cut some 45 things on the chop saw to common uh, neck wood leftovers see that and I put them in here and I have the back of the body loose all the way back to here in other words where this crack is so the first thing I want to do is I want to tape off the crack with this low tack adhesive I would really hate to ruin this finish remember we put three dollars and 74 cents into it remember that same guitar yeah so we're going to put this here because we're going to be playing with hide glue and i want to control what happens and not get it all over the back love this tape dispenser so we're going to Get everything where the cracks are, like so, because we're going to squeegee the high glue. We want to know where to stop and start. Anyway, let's do another one right there. There we go. Good. Okay. So, now, a couple things I want to show you. Um, this stuff is so good that you're going to be in complete and utter disamazement. The first thing I want to show you is these common office clips with some tape along the edge. Two. One, two. Even in Oklahoma. Now, let's say that I come over to where I want to be in line with this crack. And I pull this out. Well, by the way, there's no kerfing right here. So I'm going to have to cut a piece of this, flatten it out, and sit it right up here. So when it comes time to glue the back back on, once the crack is fixed, I've got something to glue to. So I'll have to do some curvy work on the belt sander. But anyway, back to this. Let's say that I take this and put this right here, clamp it down like that. Then I come over here, I reach rudely across the table and with the guitar 
and I do the same thing over here. Now, you know that I've shown you a thousand uses of sash cord, or at least two. So, look at this. You see this? I want to put this here like this, and I'll fold it over like this. Again, you're going to be completely and utterly disamazed when you see what's happening here. Anyway, where was I? I was talking about sash cord, right? What happens if I take this piece of sash cord, like so, oh, I've gotten ahead of myself. I need to unget ahead of myself so you can see what's going on. This is the amazing oil field rigging stuff that, that happens with guitars. So a piece of sash cord, it is about a cubit long. The Bonnevilles will tell you what that measurement means. Anyway, I take the end of it, I go like this. I put a little, little bit more. I tie a loop in it like this. You with me, guys? Yeah, there we go. If I were to rodeo, I would throw my hands up in the air right now. So I take this end and I put it through here, down here. Why do I knot this so it doesn't get all frazzled and freaked out? Then I put this up here like this. I come over here. I'm throwing my hands up in the air like the rodeo. I flip this down. That's why I put that tape there. Brilliant. Now, I run the loop as close as I can to over here. And then I do this. And I pull this like this. Again, getting this loop close to here. And then I winch on this like so. See that? And guess what? Those cracks are closing with my 39 cent scrap apparatus here. I can just tie this off, okay? You don't like the rope? Of course, I have another way to do this that you may feel more comfortable with. Um, it's more expensive and it gives you a reason to go back to the store and buy more clamps because we all know there's never enough clamps. Again, I want to point out that the spot I want to winch on or clamp down or do whatever I want to do is right in this area. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. Remember, there's protective tape here. Then I'm going to go get this giant clamp. Why do I use a giant clamp? Because a little one won't go across. Now, tricky enough, I only need to secure one side. So I can let that drop down. But this side right here needs to be open enough just to grab that top edge. So this one can be here. Now, why do I have these here? Because they will stop the clamp from sliding. A clamp wants to slide on a curved surface. So I just grab the top over here and look what's happening. You see this part is arching up as the cracks close. Ooh, coveter's paradise. Check it out. Dual receptacle, whatever you want to call it, heater. Hide glue. Water. Hot water. Hot hide glue. Hide glue needs to be hot to be effective. Resin brush, other resin brush, notice that I have trimmed the bristles to be shorter and this is longer. Check that out, trust me, on that one. So, what we are going to do is we're going to take, now that we have this arch fit here, we are going to go up wherever this is taped off and we are going to first put a little bit of hot water here. Make sure that the resin brush is nice and soft. Now sometimes the hide glue gets a little skin on the top, but we are going to take the hide glue and start up there where the crack is, and we're going to, is the word daub even a word? Or is that like, did they deem that as socially inappropriate now? Who knows? Anyway, I'm putting the hide glue. It's kind of like syrup. You should try it on some pancakes and let me know. But we're going to put that on there like so. It's just that easy. And we are going to wet our suction cup. I'll tell you what, this heater is awesome. 
we're going to wet the suction cup. Now, I've told you before, when you're using a suction cup, you're pushing the glue down into the guitar. So you start up past where the crack is, and you move in one motion. You don't pull up and down because the same suction that will drive the glue down in the crack, if you're up and down, it will suck the glue out. See, there's the glue. I start up here again. And I push it down like so. Now, what's going to happen is after a few of these, the glue will push through to the inside. We are not going to cleat it now. We want everything to come together. Stop staring at my heater. I know what you're thinking. But we want everything to come together and then we'll put the cleats on inside. Now the grain of the cleat, let me show you while I'm here. The grain of the back of the guitar runs like this. This is not going to be a cleat. It would be acoustically poor choice. But you can see the grain is here. If I were to make a cleat out of a thin piece of material and put the, the grain of the cleat running the same way, it would crack again. So. Again, this is just so you can see grain. I would make a small cleat that's wider than the crack and cleat it this way so the grain of the cleat is perpendicular, not parallel to the crack. At the same time, I will come in here and make a couple of rounded off pieces that will match this kerfing. I think you can see the edge of the kerfing. There's some missing here. And we're going to make sure that everything is good before we put this back together. Once this is all ready to glue back together, then we will use these spool clamps to make sure that everything is back where it needs to be. Then we will hot rod it up after or before I show you one more trick. Hey, you know what's beautiful? The way that arches up like that. I love to see things arch up like that. The guitar. Okay then. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our Stumac workstation. And what's also beautiful is it just spins around like so. And we can look at the mess I have underneath here, but I want to focus in on this area right here. Let's zoom in. Remember, we fixed this spot where it was teeter-tottering. But the problem is, is this is offset just a tad from that. Now, I've been hanging around Fred Wallachy a little bit too much because he's got me believing that this should be smooth. And, and, and so what's the first thing? I'm going to do, let me go over here for a minute and kick the camera tripod. I am going to get a piece of sandpaper like this, and I'm going to sand this down. Fred says, no, you don't sand this down. You build this up. And how do you do that? Well, first thing you need is this little tiny, tiny brush. You see that? Next thing is you need some lacquer, or in my case, this shellac that I made out of eucalyptus kino. Remember that episode? I probably don't have any cards left, but I'll give you one anyway right up there, right about now. But the way this works is you put some kind of a, a piece of tree sap that's dried out, and you mix it with Everclear, and it's a spirit it's a spirit-based uh, shellac or lacquer, which means if you open the jar, there we go, raw strength. If I open the jar and leave it sit there, the more spirits that filter off or waft off or where you come, the thicker the shellac or lacquer gets. And then what happens is, once it's sufficiently thick, instead of sanding this down and messing this up, you can take your brush and you can stand the guitar up or do 
whatever you need and you just dip that in there look see how thick that is and then you just take a series of coats and come along and fill that in until this is level you don't have to do any sanding you don't have to do any marring see that you might be asking yourself where do you get nitrocellulose guitar lacquer so you can do this without having a mess with trees well you get it from the nitrocellulose guitar lacquer getting place ie there it is take a picture to last longer yeah, Stumac sells this stuff clear, get clear, put it in a bottle, open it up, let it bleed off, ruin the atmosphere, upset the carbon footprint, do whatever you want to do until it is thick enough to stay on the edge. And then put it on in thin coats like that and let it flow. It's easier if you have the guitar standing up, it'll flow. One rule, remember... Spread it thin, you will win. Thre spread it thick. Never mind. That's how Fred Wallachy does it. And if Fred Wallachy does it that way, you should, Padna. Okay. Trust me, we're going to get this all put back together. We're going to do all this dainty work. And we're going to see you in the next episode when I hot rod this thing up. So let me go jabber at the end like I always do. See you over there right about now. All right, there we go. Um, pretty simple stuff. Again, um, when things happen here, they have to happen here. They happen up here. They're down here. Um, sometimes like when you're doing a, fitting a neck into an arch top guitar kit, it may seem that it's rubbing up here, so it makes sense that you would take it off right next to where it's rubbing, when in actuality, if you do that, things tilt this way or that way. So think things out. It's good to start off on these junky old guitars and get some experience under your belt. Now, once the glue is all dried, we're gonna hot rod this thing up and make it a screamer so it can spend the rest of its dismal existence in some dive bar somewhere because that's what we do here hey don't forget there will be a playlist of this guitar by hovering your mouse up there hey see that tag it's messing with my visuals man up there or at the end of the video don't forget give me a like subscribe if you haven't if you like this kind of stuff I like to think that I'm the only authority on Guitars that don't need an authority to work on them in El Mundo. See you next time.